The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the April 22nd, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Traders Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be, always be, always be what? Always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. And bit more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. But if you can't call in, well, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send it early, please. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject, then, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, I got all the U.S. indices trading to the downside. The Dow's off nearly 600 points. The S&P's off 79. NASDAQ 12236. Russell is down 41. Semi's off 41. Tranny's down 217. New York Stock Exchange off 309. Wilshire 5000 down 800. The XAU is off five bucks. Gold is off 11 bucks. Silver's down 32 cents. Light Street Crude is off a buck 72. Natural Gas is off 25 cents. The 30-year Treasury though is up three ticks she's trading at 140.05 lead the charge dollar wise the upside you've got svb financial 55 bucks je clean tech holdings 14 bucks kimberly clark up 12 lockheed martin and by the way kimberly clark no she didn't have a baby her sister did uh, uh, this week, as a matter of fact. But Lockheed Martin, that's up 7 bucks. Establishment Labs, that's up uh, $7. So the downside is Google, off $95. Amazon's down 60 HCE Healthcare's off 50 Intuitive Surgical, down 39 Dexcom, off 27 So we've got some movers, and we've got some shakers. Of course, I want to know what you want to look at. And I think what you want to look at is you want the quick play-by-play -play as to what the markets are doing. So let's go ahead and begin there. And to begin there, what we're going to do is we're going to go take a look at the... Uh, E, uh, the four equity future contracts for the 30 minute time frame. And the reason we're going to do that is because we've got TD nine count patterns that are going to form. One's going to complete. The Dow is going to complete at 130. The ES mini is going to form by 130, but will complete by two. That's the same thing for the NQ. And what happened there? I hate this thing that pops up on that screen. I wish I could get rid of it. And you've got a uh, TD9 count that's going to complete for the Russell 2000 as we come into the 130 time frame. So what you should expect, what you should anticipate is some type of... Um, some type of uh, bounce that uh, forms, uh, I'd say it starts by about 130, between 132. Now, the target levels are going to be these oscillator and change line areas. Now, they're gonna, I'm going to give you the levels right now, but they're going to change by a few bucks as price moves up or down. But use this as a guideline. The yes, mini, let's call it 43.26. And the NQ, 13.550. And the Dow, 34.306. And the Russell 2000, about the 1958-ish area. Now, if these TD9 counts don't hold and price continues to move lower, boy, it tells you about a strong momentum move to the uh, down. You don't see the chart? should see the chart. Don't know why you're not seeing the chart out there, uh, Peter. It's definitely up. 
and uh, it's the 430 minute uh, time frame charts out there. So anticipated bounce, but if we don't get one and it just cruises through these TD9 counts, gets negated, uh, then what uh, we can say is you've got a strong downside move that is underway. We've got a caller on the line. It is Jim in Palm Harbor. Jim, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm good, Steve. How are you? I am doing excellent. Thanks so much for calling. Good to hear your voice. And you want to take a look at the uh, cues out there. You're short the cues. Is that it? Uh, no, I had been, but I'm looking at uh, actually the TQQ, uh, the three T three Qs. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I was uh, the reason I was asking about it. I, I'm, I'm still experimenting. Well, I told you last time with this uh, this deal where I pick a buy zone and I have my own point of control. And and I just wonder if you could kind of look at the point of control and uh, buy zone that I have and see if it's accurate. Uh, What's the time frame, um, Jim? That your that your that your zone is for? Uh, it's for a, a, either a demand zone or a supply zone, and uh, what I'm looking at right now is a demand zone. And I had a a POC of forty two dollars and twenty cents on the TQQQ. But and what the, what uh, time frame is that? A the, daily uh, time frame, Jim? Is that a daily time frame? Is it an hourly time frame? Is it? Uh... Yeah, it works on all time frames. If, uh, it's usually short term, though. I'm talking uh, anything five, fifteen, or thirty minute time frames. Got and, it. Okay. Uh, but, and the range is uh, uh, that I've got for the zone is forty one dollars and forty two cents to forty three dollars and nineteen cents, and the the POC of that would be the forty two twenty that I was talking about, and that's where I would uh, look to buy. Uh, I wouldn't buy today with the, as bad as the market is, but I, I, that, I'm just looking at it as a, 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 a demand zone. Well, so the only demand zone that I have for the TQQQ, and that comes back, we take a look at the very right-hand panel chart, and that is the monthly time frame. And so by demand zone, what I'm referring to specifically is where the buyers are located. And so, uh, folks, if you're if you're just new listening to the show, you'll see, uh, typically you'll see uh, three lines on my chart. Uh, in this case here, they're blue lines, and I'm looking at the very right-hand panel. The top line is where sellers are located. The center line is where both both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value within the range of the profile. In the bottom of the profile is the bottom or where the buyers reside. And that's at 4141. So it's not that far away from your $42 um, nut. Um, and that's where I show the uh, where the where the next round of buyers should be. Doesn't mean that it'll hold, as you know, but that's what I've got at 4141. Does that help you out? Uh, it's exactly. Um, uh, my my uh, closest Price to, to that was 41.42, so from 41.42 to 43.19 was my zone, but 42.20 was my point of control, and so I could my my theory is I could buy anywhere in the buy zone 41.42 sure. to 43.19, and that's where Absolutely. my buyers I thought would be. So it's it's excellent. That's confirming uh, what I had. <laughs> oh, okay, but, I, uh, but like on a day like today. I'd be real leery of buying it, even though it's in my demand zone. Do you think, uh, uh, how do you handle something like that when you're, you've got just a really bad down day in a down market and you're in a buy zone where you know there's, that's where buyers might be? Uh, how do you confirm that? Well, maybe I ought to go ahead and buy, nibble at it or something. Uh, so excellent question. <laughs> e excellent question. And we're going to use that as a uh, bait to uh, make folks listen to the uh, next segment out there. So do me a favor, Jim. Hang on. I'll come back and I'll answer that as to how I would look at things. And uh, we'll go from there. This is Steve Rhodes with Jim in Palm Harbor. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we're uh, we're back uh, with uh, Jim in Palm Harbor, and uh, Jim has asked the following question, which we're going to try to answer for him, which is, he's, he's looking at an instrument. In this case here, he's looking at the TQQQ, and that's what we've got up on our screen here. And his question basically is, on a day like today, even though price is getting back to his buy zone, on a day like today, um, how do you justify entering a long position? Is that basically the question, Jim? Yes, that's very good. <laughs> Okay, all right. So what I do, and I just need my system here to uh, cooperate with me. I don't know what that's going on. I knew I shouldn't have done this during the break. But so what I'm looking at here is the TQQQ that is uh, targeting his buy zone. It happens to be also the the so-called buy zone on the monthly time frame chart, which is where buyers are lined up, and that's at 4141. So since that is a buy zone, if you will, on the monthly time frame chart, then what I do is I go take a look at the weekly chart. Now, I'm not going to look at the TQQQ for my information. And the reason is because it's a triple out there and it just doesn't work that well. You really want to look at the cues, I would say, uh, for you. You can trade this, of course, but I would make my financial decisions or my uh, pattern decisions off of the cues and its profiles, not necessarily the TQQQ. But then what I would really do here is my patterns are really coming off of the equity future contract. So that's where I'm going to go next. And where we're going to go next, we're going to try to identify is the NQ near any level of support on a weekly time frame. So we're going to go from the larger time frame, whatever that is, that gives us our buy zone. And then we're going to step it down to the next time frame. So for me, I go from a monthly to a weekly. Turns out, and I'll just simply expand out the weekly chart out here, uh, Jim, you've got price that is pulling back into a bullish structured weekly profile. 
Its buy zone, by the way, is between 13.405 and 13.868. The low so far this week has been 13.467. That was actually the low of this morning. So this is trading into a buy zone. So that says, okay, this could justify taking a long position. If I look at the daily, so then I go and go to the daily time frame. And on the daily time frame, it's kind of like, oh boy, we're trading below. Uh, the bottom of its profile was a bullish structured profile, and we may have an A to B equal CD to the downside. So let's go ahead and draw that pattern in here. And the A point on this potential pattern, the A point out here is going to be the high of uh, March the 29th. The B point now is going to be the low from April 18th, and the C point is going to be the high from April the 20th. Now, that gives us a one-to-one -one price projection of 12758 What that means to me, Jim, is that if the buy zones that you and I looked at on the weekly and on the monthly time frame fail, then we know that this A to B equals CD pattern is likely to kick in. Before I go any further, any questions about what I've shared so far? No, that's real good. I, I do use oh. the uh, QQQ uh, and I, um, uh, I look at the options and see where uh, most of the puts and the calls are uh, in that. So like today, the uh, puts are like three times more than the calls. I kind of look at that, too. Okay. And, uh, Another yeah. good tool. Another good tool. In evaluating the daily time frame, we just stick with the daily time frame for the NQ out here. What we'll also notice is that its swing point low is March the 15th. The high of that swing point is uh, 13,480. What the heck? Um, the high is 13,486. How did I get 13,508? That is weird. So the high is 13,486.50. Let me see if I can actually get this here to line up. I don't know what happened. Maybe it's my, uh, maybe it's just me. Let's see. Yeah, 13,486.50. So price has already tested that, Jim. We're trading actually just below that. We're trading at 13,473. So another confirming signal for you would be, so we've got price on the monthly in a buy zone, price on the weekly in a buy zone near support. And now we have a test of a key swing point. I would say if the NQ closed back above 13,486.50, even though we might have an A to B equal CD to the downside, you could have a rejection of swing point on lighter volume. Is it lighter volume? I don't know. What's an easy way to go with take a look at that? Well, go take a look at the index ETFs. What are the Qs doing right now as they're pulling back into a similar swing point? Well, today's volume is 46 million and the swing point from March 14th, in this case, had 79 million shares. So price here is moving back on lighter volume. And if you get a test and rejection of that swing point, again, going back to the daily time frame, then you would have a third buy signal, so to speak. Does that make sense, Jim? Sure does. Yes. Perfect. So now we're going to go from here and we're going to step over to some other short term time frame charts, because what we want to see now, folks, knowing that on the uh, daily, weekly and monthly, we have potential signals of a buy. We want to get that proven to us. And the easy way for that to happen is to go look at the intraday time frame charts here. So we start with the 30 minute time frame chart. And on the 30 minute time frame chart, what we're looking for is any kind of bottoming, confirmed bottoming pattern or signal. And what we can see is that the bar that is forming right now in seven minutes will become bar number nine of a TD nine count. That means we have a confirmed TD nine count bottom. Now what you and I know is that a lower low can occur on the bar following bar number nine. So that says that by 2.30, the NQ on a 30 minute time frame should have a complete or will have a completed TD9 count bottom. What that means to us is that price should go target its oscillator and change line. I believe you track, you monitor that as well, Jim? Yes, I do. Yeah. Perfect. So then on a 30 minute basis, what you're looking for is to see if price, should you get that bounce, that maybe it's just a counter trend move, can price, and it would be just a counter trend move, certainly on a 30 minute basis, unless price can take out that oscillator and change line, which currently is printed at 13,547, but you'll know exactly what it is, should there be any traction to the upside. And then if price can clear that level, then you'd be looking for a move all the way up to 13,677 to 13,729. I'm not saying that has to happen this afternoon, that would be its message from a 30 minute 
minute time frame. So the 30 minute shows a potential TD9 count pattern that should form by 2.30. If I look at the other time frames, the 60 minute chart, I don't have any kind of bottom signal, nor do I on the 120, nor do I on the 240, nor do I on the five hours. So you're basically down to your monthly, weekly, daily, and your 30 minute time frame chart for your signal information out there. So to recap, the very next thing I'd be looking for is does the NQ close above 13,486.50? And if that is happening, what took place on the 30 minute time frame chart? Did that give us a signal to suggest that there may be a um, more, more legs in the rally? Does that help? Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, you just really did such a fantastic job. I just amazed it. Uh, how you, you're capable of explaining everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm capable of saying what I what I think. I just don't know if what I'm saying makes any sense most of the time. But uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take it that it does for you specifically on this specific trade. And is there anything else that I can help you with? No, sir, but I really appreciate your help. <laughs> Thank you. Well, and I appreciate I appreciate the fact you've come up with your own tool that um, you know that that you're testing and working with, and uh, that is a beautiful thing. So thanks for doing that, Jim. And always good to hear from you. And have a fantastic weekend. Thank you. Bye. You bet. That was uh, Jim in. Uh, in uh, Palm Harbor, Florida. Now, there was a question that came in yesterday that I didn't get to. I believe it was from Ray in Sarasota. And I think I saved the uh, chart so that I could make sure that I answered his question. So I want to get to that first here. And that is Newmont Mining. Uh, shoot, was it Newmont Mining Mosaic? No, it wasn't. Uh, no, you know what it is? There's another spot where I've got those charts, I believe. Now, let me see here. It was ET. Energy transfer or energy partners out here. So we get back from this break. I think that's what we have up on our screen. It is. We're going to go take a look at ET. Not the uh, character ET, the stock ET. We'll be right back. The gold market has taken off topside a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the charts here for energy transfer. Ticker symbol here is ET. Let's just simply start with the monthly time frame chart. What we know about the monthly time frame chart is if price can close above 11.55, right now it's trading at 11.39. If it can close above 11.55, you're going to get an A to B equals CD pattern uh, to the upside. Now, from a volume perspective, the volume on that swing point that uh, is right right below the 11.55 is 321 million. This month so far, today's the 22nd. You're 264. So you've got that possibility by the end of the month of getting that confirmation. If you do get an A to B equal CD to the upside, uh, you're going to get run into resistance before we'd complete that pattern at about the 1543 levels, TD9 count breakdown area. So watch 1155 as you come into the end of the month out there. Uh, that will give you a signal. Now, if you're going to close above 1155, the weekly chart shows the price stopped right at its TD9 count breakdown level that formed the week of June 18th. June 18th of 2021. So we can see how that is still resistance level. So you close above that, then you're off to the races, those races being 1359. But before price heads higher out there, the daily chart is saying, I want to head lower. Yesterday was a confirmation of a roads momentum indicator top. Today is follow through with price back inside its daily profile. Now, what this may do, Ray, is just pull back into the 1093 to 1122 level. That is its bullish structured daily profile out there. If that level fails, 1093 that is, well, then we're headed lower. You could even head down to 987. That's not what I'm saying we're going to do just yet. But 1122, I said between 1093 and 1122, well, it turns out the 195-minute chart, because there are 295-minute bars in a trading day out there, well, it turns out that it may be price that is maybe targeting its breakout level that's at 11 11 and i think you were looking to add to your position so right now the based upon the information that we have here we're going to go with 11 11. why do we think that's likely to at least unfold well because if we look at the 130 minute chart price is now below its breakout level of 11 47. this could be its second consecutive bar it's below the 65 minute breakout level and its next target area is 11 11. uh so 11 11 is uh i don't know if it's a lucky number or not you know if you like uh, craps out there you know throw two 11s in a row that's a beautiful thing perhaps if you're betted if you have bet in the right spot out there um so that's what we're going to go with so i do hope that that helps you out with regard to energy transfers and uh, thanks so much for being patient and waiting a day now i want to go back there was also something that came in from uh, one of our listeners who is in uh, portugal Mike used to formerly from Sarasota, and he was taking a look at a trade in Apple. And I just simply wanted, there's new information that took place yesterday. And so I wanted to be able to share that with really with everyone out here. And uh, so let's go take a look at that. And that new information means that we have now a potentially new A to B equals CD pattern. In other words, the A to B equals CD pattern that I had originally drawn in. Let me go find, where's the three time frames? So let's take a look at Apple. Let me expand out the daily time frame out here, AAPL. And I will show you the original A to B equals CD pattern that I had drawn in here. And it looked like this. And this was a confirmed A to B equals CD. You had the A point out here in the trading day of March the 30th. Your B point was the low from April 11th. And then your C point was the high from April 14th. And April 14th actually closed below the low of April 11th. April 11th had volume of... 72 million shares and when it was passed it was passed with 75 million shares and that was a confirmed a to b equals cd however there's new data that has arrived and this a to b equals cd is now void why is it void 
The reason that it's void is if you take a look at the C point for the A to B equals CD, that happened to be surpassed yesterday. So you have a higher high. So I have to use that as the C point. But then we take a look at the low that was used or the B point for that A to B equals CD pattern. Well, that uh, now I would have to switch to April the 18th. So the A to B equals CD pattern that was out there no longer exists, or at least not the way that Stevie does this, because what we always do is we use new information that the market reveals to us. So now the B point is April the 18th, and the C point out here is going to be the high from yesterday. Now that would give us a one-to-run price projection of 155, 1.272 of 151. But here's the deal now, Mike, is that that new swing point, which is the trading day of April 18th, had volume of 69 million shares. Today at 1.34 in the afternoon, you are at 43 million shares. You're trading into it. I believe it's going to be light volume, but I won't know until day's end, nor will you. But look at that at the end of the day out here. So the idea that Apple is definitely going to head lower because the A to B equals CD pattern was taken off the table yesterday. And now you need to wait for new information revealed to us today. No matter how you slice it, you cannot use, well, you can use whatever you want. But if you want to really do the A to B equals CD pattern, you can't use what we had in there before yesterday's data arrived. So hope that helps you out. It's subtle but it is important and that's about us always using new information our role as technicians is not to get married to the pattern that we just drew in there yesterday it is to say get married to the idea what new information has arrived and has that changed anything out there so that's how we look at that and i wanted to make sure that i uh, updated mike in uh, portugal hope you're having a great weekend hope you're not even listening but maybe you catch this on an archive over the uh, weekend let's go to our next question this is coming in from david in tomball texas it's a follow-up to yesterday's question let me change screens out here and uh, get back to uh, maybe we're already on the screen let me see am i I don't know, but I'm going to be on it now. And I've got to get to one more thing here, my radio charts. And I believe it's about new month. Yeah. And so the question is, my question today is follow up to a question yesterday. Where's a good buy point uh, for Newmont mining considering today's price? Where are support and resistance levels? So let's look at our three time frames out here. Let's type in Newmont Mining. Let's go ahead and, cons and condense the uh, daily time frame chart out here. And uh, like I said, I'm going to have to open it back up. So here with regard to Newmont Mining, here's what we know right now. Newmont Mining, it's not, that's not the right, uh, let me get rid of that. Newmont Mining is testing a swing point, uh, David, from March the 16th. That swing point has volume of 9.5 million. Your testing right now is 7.2. I don't know what the volume is going to be like at the end of the day. But if you do get a rejection on lighter volume of the price point of 70.91, that could be could be a buy point. So that's something to take a look at. You'll want to take a look at the volume. When we look at the weekly or the monthly time frame charts there, they're not helping us to suggest that that's a bottom. So then what you and I have to do is kind of like what Jim and I did is go back through the charts and see if there's anything else here to support getting back to that swing point level. On the daily time frame, there's not. Other than testing that level, in fact, if that level fails, odds would favor that Newmont Mining is signaling wants to get back to 59.86. We don't have that just yet. Um, on a weekly chart, we're not going to see anything else out here to help us out. So, uh, and on a monthly chart, we're not going to. Now, the monthly chart is still bullish, by the way. And it's bullish because price is above the top of its monthly profile. It's above its green oscillator and change line. So, for the longer term time frame, it is bullish. Now, because price has pulled back a bit today, the yearly time frame has switched from being all right bullish to not so much. Because price needs to, in order to be bullish on a yearly basis, you got to trade above the prior year's high. As we look at intraday time frame charts, you had wave number seven, letter G. Price found resistance at its breakdown level of 77.45. So that's not giving you any kind of a buy signal out here. The th but it does have the bottoming signal. The 30-minute uh, time frame chart. Uh, forms uh, what you've got a road's momentum indicator bottom price bounces and finds resistance right where it should which is the center of its bullish structured profile when you close below a bullish structured profile counter trend moves will find resistance at the center which is what this did 76.98 which is what this did for the 30 minute time frame chart 65 minute time frame chart td9 count finding resistance at the bottom of his profile you're not getting any signals here you got the bottom signals but resistance has failed at this stage or is held at this stage so you want to stay put today come back and look at this on monday see road to tf and ed hope you're right back 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. Data White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So David also wanted to take a look at uh, Mosaic out here. Now, Mosaic is trading below the bottom of its daily profile right now, David. And so the likely price target is its swing point, which was from uh, March the 29th. The top of that swing point is 65.10. Now, I'm not saying that's a, a buy point just yet, but that is likely where price is going to go target. As I pull over my other Mosaic charts out here, the white background charts, what we're going to see is the TD9 count breakout level. So this four, a TD9 count top, so that's on April 18th. With price below the bottom of its profile, price may be just pulling back to its breakout level. That's at 6505. So we've got 6505 and 6510. So what you'd really be looking for there is for price to pull back into that swing point and do it with lighter volume. The volume there was 14.8 million shares. So if you get a test and rejection of the 6510, um, you'd be a still, maybe it's tested the 6505 level. Uh, that could be a buy point into Mosaic. Now, if price closed below 6505, then we're looking at price point back perhaps to 4536. That's what the daily time frame chart tells us. The weekly chart says, I don't know what you guys are talking about just yet, 6517 is my area of support. Although, uh, 
um, it looks like you are going to get on a weekly basis, you're going to get a confirmed. We well, have a confirmed TD9 count. What am I talking about? So 6518 is an area of support. But uh, so you got 6505, 6510, and 6518. All that is lining up pretty well for you. So I think that's the area to be looking for. Monthly chart says I'm not done, headed higher out there. So it looks like this is just a bit of a uh, respite and a pullback. So I hope that helps you out, David. Have a, a fantastic weekend. And as always, thanks so much for your requests and questions. LB writes in, he says, uh, hope your day is going well. Absolutely, it is. I hope yours is too. Uh, looking for a good entry point in URA, uranium out here. So let's uh, get that into the uh, screen. Let me get that on my other chart. Whoops, URA. There we go. And so on an entry point, so this is now trading below its daily profile, below a prior swing point. That prior swing point I'm referring to was March the 29th. That had 2.7 million. You're below it with 3.5 million shares. So it looks like this one's lower price. You're back inside the weekly profile. You were always inside. You've been consolidating inside the monthly profile for about the last four months out here. So the next downside price target that I've got at the moment uh, is the weekly chart. And that's in that so-called buy zone or bullish structured area, which is between 1948 and 2101. But let's pull over the uranium charts out here, see if there's anything else on the daily or weekly. Well, today's going to be bar number five. Maybe this will go ahead and complete a TD9 count, but the earliest that's going to take place is by the end of next week. But so nothing to suggest that this doesn't want to continue to move Lower. And on a weekly time frame, really the same thing. It's breakout levels at 2027. So that really could be the price target. You're 2427 as we speak right now. On a 30 minute time frame chart, uh, you're going to form bar number eight as we speak. That'll complete at uh, 2 p.m. You could get some type of short term bounce out there. But overall, you're looking for an entry point. I think it is lower. And let's wait to see what kind of pattern completes on the uh, daily time frame out there. And I would say that would be towards the uh, Wednesday, Thursday time frame of next week. So LB, I hope that that helps you out. As always, thanks for writing in as well. And you have a fantastic weekend. Michael P. writes in. He says, uh, Steve, I'm in Dash uh, Short. So D-A-S-H, D-A-S-H. You know, that's how you spell Dash. Am I good or what? Now let's go find out what Dash is out here. Dash is DoorDash. Okay, now that makes sense. Uh, the question is, I'm in dash short. Also, I was in shop puts, but got out early. Where do you see shop? Oh, well, you're in dash. So with regard to dash out here, you're trading below the daily profile, trading below the weekly profile. Not enough uh, information on a monthly basis from a profile standpoint. Uh, so it looks like this wants lower price. And the lower price says it should go target that swing point from March the 14th. And that's anywhere between 86.09 and uh, 74.32. Volume there was 9.8 million shares. You're pulling back with uh, light volume today, about 3.7 million shares. Nonetheless, at least the top of that swing point should be its target. Not seeing anything different when I look at my white background charts in the daily. You're only in bar number three for a TD9 count. And on the weekly time frame chart out here, um, yeah, you're below that weekly profile. It says it goes and tests its all-time low out there. So no reason to exit that trade. You wanted to know about Shopify. Is that correct? Yeah, Shopify. So let's go ahead and try to answer that question. I'll get that populated on those three time frame charts, and we'll see what the black background charts tell us with regard to Shop. Uh, price is trading below its daily profile, below its weekly profile, below its monthly profile, into a monthly level of trend line support out there. I don't know that that's good enough. Let's go take a look at the uh, white background chart, see what was. So here's the cool thing about Shopify. Um, you have triggered, now today's candle session has triggered a Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom signal. It's just triggered it, just like the top did. So when this formed a high, it was a Rhodes Mintum Indicator top. And that was confirmed on the trading day of November the 26th when that bearish engulfing candle confirmed. So Michael, I don't know if I'd go short shop right now, knowing that this pattern exists. Not that I'm not saying it's not going to go lower, um, but now with that pattern in play out here, I'd be careful. And you're also pulling back into a breakout level, which is at 369.30. So hope that helps you out with regard to Shopify. And as always, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Let's go out to Brent in Martinez, California. Hey, Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. How are you? Excellent. Thanks so much for asking. And the ticker symbol is H-I-M-X. And uh, tell the folks what you're doing. That is HIMAX Technologies trading at 873. And I'm assuming you're doing some bottom fishing out there. How can I help you? Yeah, yeah I'm not buying anything yet. I guess my, my first observation would be that we're in that long consolidation. 
between roughly you know ten and twelve, and that has been you know surpassed now to the downside. So yeah, if yeah. you even just took that range, then you're talking down at eight somewhere. And I just was wondering if there's something on your charting that you know it's probably below all the TAS levels. I mean, I'm not sure if there's anything down there that it would be a, and it could be much further down, just anywhere, maybe on the monthly, you know, that shows some kind of uh, potential support level. So, you know, great, great. Uh, so today's going to become bar number nine of a TD9 count. And that says that you could see at least some type of short-term bottom form between today and Monday out here. Now, that short-term bottom may only take us to the oscillator and change line, which right now is printed about 923. If price were to get above that, I would expect price to bounce up to 989, um, which is the top of its uh, bearish structured profile out there. It might be 959, but 959 to 989. So on a daily basis, there is a potential for a bottoming signal. When I look at the weekly time frame chart, and you're right, price is below the daily and weekly profiles. The weekly chart says to us that price really should go target 671. So if you don't get a TD9 count bottom that takes hold um, by Tuesday, the pattern should will be completed by Monday. If it doesn't take hold and price trades below the low of that pattern, then Brent, what we'll know is that the signals from the charts are suggesting 671 would be the next area to look at. There is a profile level, which is on the monthly time frame chart, that price could get to, and that is much lower. And that's at the price point of $4.74. You know, let's just leave that out there right now. Let's instead say we know we've got a daily TD9 count bottom, so you could get a bottom or you could just simply get a bounce, or you could get a complete failure out there. And if you get the failure, that failure again tells us that we're going to head down to that or should head down towards that 671 level. Now, Brent, I just saw that we're going into a break here, so I leave you with that information. And when you come when we come back, um, just uh, any, just let me know what else I can provide to you uh, to help you with uh, your your uh, consideration for HIMX. This is Steve Rhodes with Brent in Martinez, California. We'll be back in just a few moments. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities.
To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Hey, Brent, uh, during the breakout here, I noticed that uh, Hymex Technologies has now a confirmed daily A to B equals CD to the downside. So the A point out here was a trading session from December 31st. The uh, B point was the March 15th low. The C point was about a 30... 38.2 is 37.37 retracement on March the 24th. And that B point, which was March 15th, was taken out with volume. That B point had 2.6 million shares, and it was passed with uh, 7.5 million shares. So that A to B equals CD pattern gives us a price projection of 575. So maybe what we get is uh, a TD9 count bottom over the next couple of days that takes price up into about the 959, 989 level before it begins its next leg to the downside. That's what it looks like to me. What questions does that pose uh, for you with the information I've shared so far. You must have been reading my mind, Steve. <laughs> you, ah, you just answered exactly what I was going to put to you. So that was, oh, uh, perfect. That was <laughs> uh, it's, that's great. So, yeah, I was able to pull the chart back, look at it a little bit further. And so that's what I think is going to play out here. And, and we'll know, I would say we'll know by Tuesday or Wednesday of next week out there. Brent, is there anything yeah, else no, I can do for you? I noticed that pattern too. I, I think, honestly, in this market, just a lot of patience is, is uh, not a bad idea. Uh, I was noticing that, you know, I'd talk about overstock and that surpassed that low that we were kind of looking at. So I think it's, uh, there's no big rush to be going long anything right now. I just, I'm trying to get some things on my list. And, yes. you know, if they get down to those targets and it all matches up with the market potentially bottoming, that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Listen, I think it's a really smart idea what it is that you're doing. And I've got the chart up on the screen right now that tells us still the reasons why. And that is, is that uh, we still have global capital that is fleeing Europe. And uh, it's uh, headed here to the uh, U.S. And uh, right now you've got the euro at 107. But we get below 105 out here. This is on a closing basis. Uh, the floodgates uh, should open up for the euro to really crash to the downside, so to speak. I don't mean crash in a crash way. And that should send capital into the U.S. stock market out here. So, Brent, always good to speak to you. Have a fantastic weekend. And hopefully we'll talk again uh, next week. You sure will, Steve. You have yourself a great weekend. And thanks so much for your help. You bet. Folks, stay tuned. David White's up next, your favorite polar bear. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll see you on the Monday at 8 o'clock sharp. Take care.